bees are dying. And what are we going to do about it? Well, how about putting 30,000 of the stinging insects in one of the most populated areas on Colorado State University's campus on a fire escape? That's the obvious answer, right? I understand this may not be the most logical statement, and to some of you, it even may sound like a bad idea. But that is exactly what we did in 2018 when the CSU Apiculture Club, which is a fancy way of saying beekeeping club, and I put our first hives here on campus. Um, you know, to explain myself fully and you know, validate this idea, which may seem a little out there in the name of saving the bees, I'm going to have to take this back to the beginning, to the very beginning, to my personal beginnings, which is a story of a love for the environment and nature. Ever since I can remember, I've always relished everything the natural world could throw at me, from catching bugs with my kindergarten best friend to going out to Iowa every summer and fishing with my family. Being in the environment is just part of who I am. And you know what? In no way do I attribute that completely to myself, but instead the fantastic exposure I've had growing up. You know, from long walks with my dad learning about all the different plants and trees, uh, to both my grandfathers who shared this deep curiosity with nature. I have had this lucky experience to be the learner that I am and develop this environmental literacy which I've been able to build upon. Growing up, this took all sorts of different forms from, you know, reading books on plants and animals and, you know, catching any little critter that I could catch on the ground to, you know, numerous projects like planting hundreds of seedling trees and numerous iterations of vegetable gardens and eventually, when I was 13, my own beehive. And let me tell you, bees are so cool. <laughs> Did you know that humans have been keeping bees for over 8,000 years and in that time have developed an intricate relationship with them? Honeybees were brought over to the United States for their wax and honey production. And even though they are a non-native species, their importance cannot be understated. Fruits such as apples, almonds, cherries, and blueberries are almost entirely pollinated by honeybees. And this is a multi-billion dollar industry in the U.S. today. So when we hear that bees are declining, this should be very concerning. You know, there is, there is things impacting them. There's diseases and human impacts. And, just ba plain bad beekeeping. And that's just one of 20,000 species of bee. There are so many native bees. There's 946 native bee species here in Colorado. Many of them are solitary, and some don't even resemble what we think of as a bee. But they each fill these important ecological niches. And they are also in trouble. You know, we have human encroachment, changing environment, and other issues we have to contend with. And here I'm going to come back to the honeybee, because if you want to save the bees, honeybees are really good, because they're portable. You can put them on a fire escape. You can bring people in. You can look at them. You can use them as an example to teach people about bees and give them that environmental literacy. You know, and as a club, I was able to bring that to the university. I established the club in 2017. Um, and we were able to reach out to students and the community by bringing hives to campus, teaching people about beekeeping, how to be a good beekeeper. And how to be a good beekeeper is one of our major goals here, because little known fact is people who kill honeybees, it's going to be the people, not, not the environment, not all this other stuff. One of the major causes is bad beekeeping. You know, and to learn how to be an active and observant beekeeper is a big part of that. Um, honeybees aren't from North America. And they're not particularly well adapted to our cold climate in a lot of cases. They need extra maintenance like winter feeding and insulation. And this, coupled with a slew of diseases that they're susceptible to, can make beekeeping a tricky business. And so through the club, we work to educate people how to be more mindful beekeepers. And not just that, but being that, you won't affect your neighbors. Because bees, if you have bees and you're not even taking care of them correctly, it can also, because of the way they transfer diseases, can spread to your neighbor's hives and cause them problems. And past that, it can even spread to native bees. And now we've brought the beekeeper from this spectrum of just, just the beekeeper to the community, and now the environment. So it is very important that beekeepers are, think about what they do and are doing the correct practices. They can be good land stewards and environmentally conscious beekeepers. So we worked with the university for that first year to try to establish what we wanted to do. You know, what, how can we align our goals? How can we make this that it was beneficial to both the club, teach people how to beekeep, and be an education outlet for the community? 
And by doing that, we were able to secure some funding to put our first beehives on campus in almost 50 years. Now, finding funding is one thing, but figuring out how to put bees in such a populated area is another. We worked with different groups on the campus um, to find a spot. We first thought on top of a roof, but because of safety and access concerns, this wasn't a viable option. Then came the idea of putting them on a fire escape. And this comes with some skepticism because, yes, they are very visible. They're in a highly populated area, and frankly, they come in contact with people every day. And I understand, this can be scary. This is a scary prospect. Bees do sting. I, I can't deny that. Um, but, you know, by knowing bees and knowing what they're like, they're naturally very gentle creatures. They're more focused on, you know, going to flowers, collecting that nectar and pollen that they need than being a nuisance to people. In fact, most bee stings are not even from bees. They're from wasps, the more opportunistic relatives of bees that cause these issues and have these negative interactions with people. And armed with that knowledge, we were able to educate and then step past that skepticism and establish our first hives. To do this, we ordered our supplies in spring of 2018, built our hives, and we're ready to go. All it took was to get the bees in. When you get bees in, you order them in a box called a package. Now, a package is basically a swarm of thousands of bees with a small queen in a cage. And they ship it to you. And we were waiting, and it was April 21st, we got the call. It was time to go, you know? Our bees were there, we arrived, and it was, it's an amazing sight, you know? You've got all these beekeepers who have gathered, and this audible hum will fill the air. You know, everybody's bustling around, you know, excited for this year, we're about to spend this loving relationship with this creature. And we brought him back to Fort Collins, and we put him in our hives. And to do that, it's kind of a dramatic and, you know, relatively fun uh, thing. You, you take the bees and you physically will dump them <laughs> into the boxes. And it's, it's great for people because they're, they're very docile at this point. They, they're just, it's so much fun. And it's as simple as then putting the, putting the hive back together, putting on a jar of sugar, and then giving them weekly checks while educating people and providing that exposure to the community that we have bees on campus. And things went great for 20 days. <laughs> and that's when I got the call at 3 a.m. Freddie, your bees are in the elevator. <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> and so little time to ask them. I had to get in my car, drive over to school, and I was greeted by an officer. And someone had taken one of the hives as a prank and put it in a trash bag and dumped it into one of the elevators at one of our residence halls top and bottom removed. And as you can imagine, the bees were not happy with this current predicament. <laughs> they, they, they don't like being inside in the middle of the night. And they, they were buzzing around angry and confused, and I did my best to, to gather them up and put the hive back in place. And, you know, bees are amazing. And they're incredibly resilient. And actually, the, the bees bounce back from that. And despite, except for the ones I had to vacuum up, that <laughs> didn't, didn't make it. But... <laughs> no, but the impact was greater than that. The impact was bigger than that. It, we were able to save the bees, but uh, what, what were our repercussions? Someone has a prank, I thought this would be funny. You know, was this ever a feasible idea? Did we trust students too much? Did we, was there ever, was ever even going to be possible to do this here on campus? But in my mind, I see this not as a failure in our implication of our process or where we put them or any of that. It was a failure in the exposure that these people had, that these bees now had to live amongst. And I honestly, to the bottom of my heart, believe that these people, if they had had that exposure, if they had that environmental literacy to understand why this project was happening, why those bees were there, what the positive implications of that were, and to learn from it, they would not have seen them as a prop. And, in our, and we, you know, we decided that maybe this was a one-off. We chained down our hives to the platform, any more of this, and the rest of the year went really great. We have 40 students involved in the club. We got everybody up in the hives in the summer. Um, we even got a gallon of honey out that's going back into the dining centers for special events. This is a really cool experience for everybody. And it's education and outreach to the community during this whole period. We were able to reach so many people in that first year, from you know, the students in our club to the community at CSU to the Northern Colorado community at large. And one of my favorite experiences here was getting to take an observation hive. For any of you who don't know, an observation hive is a glass-sided hive 
where you can see the bees going about their business without having to get into a bee suit and get in that close-up interaction. And I was able to bring it into a kindergarten class. And, oh man, you're an instant celebrity. <laughs> Seeing all those bees that go up and tap on the glass. No, Jimmy. <laughs> and it's great. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. And it was a light bulb moment for me because, you know, this is the type of experience that I had as a kid. And I was then there because of that exposure, because I had that environmental literacy that I was able to educate someone else. And maybe, just maybe provide that spark in them for them to in turn want to make a difference. And that's why we're here, right? That's why we put bees on campus. To make a difference in someone else's life, to open that door to them to, you know, have that understanding, that respect. And I'd like to stand up in front of you and say that I am the expert on bees. And frankly, that's not true. Um, you can spend a whole lifetime studying honeybees, and people do, and still learn something new every time you open up a hive. Being a beekeeper is about being a lifelong learner. That's important to understand. And you can spend a lifetime, but it's just one out of 20,000 species of bee. Like, this is amazing, but none of that learning, that love, that passion would ever occur without first having that spark of exposure, that environmental literacy to understand what's happening and why it's happening. That's very important to understand. And I believe wholeheartedly that exposure on any level, whether that be, you know, to kindergartners or college students, is the first step into actually making a difference. We have to get out there, we have to educate, we have to be that community resource. Because if, if people do not have that, that understanding, that baseline to start off of, we're done before we even started. Nobody cares about the bees if they don't know why they should care about the bees, right? You know, and, and it's up to us to be out there and educate ourselves, too. Reach out to those experiences. Go to a TED Talk about bees. Learn something new, right? Even if it's simple as just stopping and watching a bee do what it do, does best on a flower and learning something from it, we've expanded our environmental literacy and we have a greater understanding of respect. Because understanding breeds respect, and respect leads to wanting to make a difference. And that's a really big concept. To make a difference, we have to have that exposure. So, maybe when the question is asked, how are we going to save the bees? We want to save the bees. Maybe the answer is putting them on a fire escape because to save the bees, the first step is having that exposure to bees. And that's how we're going to make a difference. Thank you. <laughs>